Firebase makes basic user authentication very easy, but what happens if you require additional data from your user before they're authorized to start using your app? In this episode, I'm going to set up a multi-step signup form that requires the user to fill out a catchphrase on their user profile before they're authorized to start using the app. Then we're going to secure all the application data on both the front end and the back end. This feature works by setting up a custom user document in the Firestore database. We can then verify that the current user has the correct information on their document before they're authorized to perform certain actions. In order to build this feature, I'm going to be using the Firestarter demo app, which is on GitHub. You can clone it if you want, but this code can be applied to any Angular app that's using Firebase. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe, and you can find all the source code at angularfirebase.com. The first place we're going to start is in the auth service, and in my case, it's in the core module. The goal with the service is to keep track of the current user and give them the ability to sign in via email and password. The important imports to take note of here are Angular Fire Auth and Angular Firestore, as well as the switch map operator from RxJS. The first thing I'm going to do is set up an interface to model our user data. We need to have a user ID and email address, which we'll get from Firebase Auth, and then our custom piece of data is the catchphrase. Notice that you don't need to actually add the password to the user interface, that's all handled by Angular Fire Auth. So our actual user is going to be an observable type to this interface. Then we'll inject our dependencies in the constructor. The notify service that I'm adding here is part of the demo app. It's not required, but it's used to show the end user any problems with the sign-in process. Then inside the constructor, we'll define the user variable. So we do this by calling Angular Fire Auth state, which gives us an observable that we can call switch map on. If the current user is logged in, then we'll go ahead and retrieve the user data from Firestore. We do that by calling AFS doc and then point to that current user's user ID and then call value changes to get the observable. If the user is not logged in, then we're just going to return an observable of null. That chunk of code is going to keep track of the current user at the global level throughout our application. It's easy for things to go wrong with email password auth. For example, the user might try to log in with an email address that's already been taken. When that happens, we're going to use this helper method to notify the user in the front end. After that, we're going to create another helper method that will create a new user document when the user first signs up. When the user signs up, Firebase will give us a user object. We can then use that object to point to a document in Firestore. At this point, we're only gonna have the user's email address and user ID, so we'll go ahead and set that to an object. Then we can update the document in Firestore. Now we need a way to create a new user by having them log in with an email address and a password. So we'll create a method that will handle this data, and then we can call Angular Fire Auth create user with email and password. This is going to return a promise, and if it's successful, it will return the user object. And then we'll go ahead and use that user object to create the user document in that helper method that we just defined. And lastly, we'll catch any errors and notify the user if there's any problem with the sign up. That handles the first part of the signup, but if you have additional steps, you'll need a method to update data on that user document. This method will take the current user as well as the data that we want to update, and then we'll point to that user's user ID in Firestore and update the data. Now let's jump over to the user form component and put the service to use. First, I want to show you how it's set up in the router. So here I'm in the app routing module, and I have three unrelated components that we're going to lock down for unauthorized users later. And then our user form component, we're going to load at the login path. We're going to come back here a little bit later to add a router guard to secure all of these routes. Then you'll also need to go into whichever ng module uses this component and import the reactive forms module from Angular Forms. Now we can start writing this component. First, we need the auth service, and we also need a few reactive forms pieces, including form group, form builder, and validators. The component is going to use two separate form groups. So the first form will be the signup form, and the second form will be the detail form where we collect any additional information we want from the user. In this case, we're only collecting the catchphrase property, but you could collect any information you want there. Then we'll inject form builder in the constructor as well as the auth service. To create a reactive form, you call form builder group, and then you pass it an object where each key is a corresponding form field. So in this case, we have an email input, then we set its value equal to an array, where the first value in that array is an empty string, and then the second value is another array of validators. These validators are based on their HTML counterparts. In this case, we are going to validate the email is required and that it has an email format. 
For the password, we're going to use a regular expression, which just validates that there's at least one number present in the password string. And then we're also going to validate that it has a minimum length of 6 and a max length of 25. Then we'll set up the second form in exactly the same way, but it's actually much simpler. We'll just say detail form is the form builder group, and its only field is going to be the catchphrase, which is required. And that's all it takes to set up a reactive form. It's just a series of form fields that are defined directly in your TypeScript. The main problem is that they generally create a lot of TypeScript code. So we can cut down on this code at least a little bit by using getters. So we'll call signup form get email, and we'll repeat this pattern for each individual form field. When we get to the actual form HTML, you'll see that this drastically cuts down on the amount of code that we need to use in the template. The last thing we need is an event handler for when these forms are submitted. So when they submit the signup form, we'll call our email signup method from the service with their email value and password value. And for the catchphrase, we simply call the auth service update user method with the catchphrase that they enter into that form. Now we're going to switch over to the HTML and I'll show you how to use this reactive form in the template. I'm going to set up an ng container that's going to wrap both of the forms. The reason for this is that we can unwrap the user observable to apply some conditional logic to determine which form to show. So we'll do that by calling auth user async, or we're going to show an empty object if the user is null. And then we're going to set that to the user template variable. I realize that looks kind of weird, but it is a very useful technique in Angular. The next thing we'll do is set up our form group. So we do that by calling form group with our signup form. This form should only be shown if we don't have a user ID, meaning the user has no Firebase account at all. Then I'm going to add the detail form right below it, and we're only going to show this form if the user is authenticated, but they still don't have the catchphrase on their user document. Then I'll set up one more block here, and this one will show if the user is logged in and they have a catchphrase, meaning the form is 100% complete. You could extract this into separate components, but I'm just showing it all in one go here just to keep this as simple as possible. Going back to the signup form, we'll first bind our signup method to the ng submit event. Then we'll set a label and a form input for the email address. We connect this input to our reactive form in the TypeScript by calling form control name followed by email. Because we set validators on this form, we can determine whether or not it is in a valid state based on the user's input. When the form's not valid, we want to show an error message, and we only want to show it if the form's dirty, which means that the user has started typing into that form input. Then we'll go and do the same exact thing for the password, but the only difference, instead of dirty here, I'm going to use touched. The form input is considered touched when the user has entered their mouse inside of that form input. So that just gives you another option for determining when you want to actually display the error message. We can also tell when a form is valid, by calling sign up form valid, we can determine if the entire form is valid as well as all of the inputs contained inside of it. As a final touch, we'll disable the submit button so the user can't accidentally submit an invalid form. When the user submits their form and they're successfully authenticated, it's going to hide this initial form and then bring up our secondary form here. So for this one, we'll bind it to the set catchphrase method, and then we'll go ahead and add the form control name and then another submit button for that as well. The end result looks something like this. We start typing in the form and then we get this validation error until we actually enter a valid email, then it has the green border. Then we go ahead and enter our password and we get the green message that the form looks good. So now we authenticate in Firebase and then it brings up the secondary form. The signup process works as expected at this point, but we still want to set up a router guard to prevent our users from navigating away from the form if they haven't fully completed it. We can do that by setting up an auth guard that we'll use in our app routing module. Guards use the injectable decorator, so they behave just like services do in Angular. First, I'm going to import it into the module and then add it to the providers array. Then you can use the guard on individual routes by setting the can activate property and you just pass it to its array of guards. Now we can go into the actual auth guard file and we're going to import our auth service. And if you remember from earlier, our auth service provides a user observable. So what we're going to do is convert that user observable into a Boolean that's going to determine whether or not a user is authorized to visit a certain route. So we're going to inject the auth service in the constructor, and then we're going to use the Angular router as well as the notification service that I was talking about earlier. The can activate method inside the guard needs to return a Boolean observable. 
So we first take our user observable and then we map it down to a Boolean. And we determine this Boolean by whether or not the user has that catchphrase property on their user document. We convert the property to a Boolean by adding a double bang in front of it. If this evaluates to false, we're going to use the router as well as the notification service to redirect the user back to the form and then show them an error message. The end result is that any routes that have this guard applied to it will not be activated unless the user has that catchphrase property on their document in Firestore. That's only going to secure routes on the front end. If you have truly sensitive information there, you'll want to also send a backend database rule. In this case, you can check if the catchphrase exists on the current user's document by pointing to the user document with the request auth UID. If it's not there, the user won't be able to read or write any documents associated with this rule. That's it for multi-step authentication with Firebase. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book as well as one-on-one -on -one project support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.